Okay, this one seventeen seven sixteen. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of God came to him, Go and at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have instructed a widow there to supply you with, with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me some Drink, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me, for what you have, and bring it to me. And then, make some for yourself and your son. For this what, for this what the Lord, the God of Israel says, The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your, your daily bread. I pray for David today that you keep feeding him with your wisdom. Amen. Oh man, thank you so much, Vanessa and uh, Becky and Tim and the band. And hi, everyone. Uh, so good to be digging into God's word together. Uh, again, what a, a week it's been. Uh, this uh, week, the Prime Minister announced that uh, schools would continue with remote learning until at least the 8th of March. Uh, and I want to speak to the kids for just a moment, whether you're in primary school or secondary school or college, uh, I just want you to listen up because I know it's been really hard in, in many different ways doing this remote learning from home. Um, I know that some of you are in school and that has its own challenges as well, but uh, there's a really great and important and useful life lesson that uh, actually this all can teach as well. And this is important, not just for our kids, but for all of us to learn. And here's the life lesson. School takes different forms. School takes different forms. It isn't just about the building or even about being of a certain sort of school age or season in your life. It is all about learning and an attitude to learning. And maybe you're thinking, well, this time of uh, uh, COVID and this uh, global pandemic is a time of learning less um, rather than more. But I just want to ask, could this be a time when actually God wants to teach you and I more than we expect? You know, so often God has more to teach us through the hard times than the easy times. So you may not be in a school building and you may not even be that kind of school age. But I believe that God is uh, teaching you and I through this time. And like Elijah and the widow at Zarephath, I still have so much still to learn. You know, uh, we heard last week when Tim was preaching on uh, Elijah being uh, near this uh, brook in the Kerith Ravine, that uh, actually God hadn't sent him there and got him in that place and that time uh, as a punishment, but as a preparation, a preparation to help him learn some things, to learn to sit with God before he stands for God, to learn to follow uh, God before he leads others. And, and, you know, this is a bit of the story which continues on very much uh, in uh, a line with what we've been hearing. There's a, uh, the same national crisis is happening for Elijah, a big, huge drought that's affecting the whole nation. Uh, we know it's the same God who is with Elijah. But uh, though the drought continues, something happens in verse six, which is really striking. It says this uh, in, verse, uh, in verse seven, actually. But sometime later, the brook dried up 
it seemed like God's means of provision, the way he was providing, had stopped. And that was real trouble for Elijah. He needed water. And, um, you know, maybe you are in a time, in a season where you're facing real trouble. Maybe there's a way that God has been providing for you uh, and that stopped. Maybe you've uh, lost a job through this pandemic. Maybe you've lost a loved one or a friend. And that can be really, really hard. These are amazing gifts that God gives to us and living without them is tough. So why is it that God allows the brook to dry up? Well, A.W. Pink in his great book on Elijah asks that uh, question and uh, he answers it like this. Why does God allow the brook to dry up? And he says to teach us to trust God himself and not just his gifts. That was an important lesson for Elijah to learn, but not just for Elijah, all of us need to learn it. And so God sent Elijah to a very unexpected place. He sent him to Zarephath. Now, Zarephath means crucible. It's a very apt name for a place of further training and testing. It was about 50 miles north of the Kerith Ravine up and on the coast. And in fact, this was outside of uh, kind of Israel and uh, it was in the kind of area where Jezebel, the kind of enemy of uh, uh, Elijah, ha- had come from originally. It was kind of her hometown. And uh, actually, this is where the next part of Elijah's school is going to take place. It's going to be a place that he didn't expect. And he's going to receive some provision from God in an unexpected way. And, you know, I believe that God, too, is got lessons he is teaching us in unexpected ways in this unexpected time. So listen up and let's see how we can receive in unexpected ways. That's the first thing I want us to look at, receiving in unexpected ways. We read this in uh, uh, verses 7 to 12. Sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah and said, go at once to Zarephath. Um, I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath, and when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. What a kind of desperate situation. And actually, Elijah arrives after this kind of probably a a few days journey through the desert. uh, Again, really tired and himself in a bit of a desperate situation. And I wonder if you can put yourselves in Elijah's sandals, as uh, Jeff Lucas so wonderfully puts it in his book. He says, put yourself in Elijah's sandals for a few moments. You're tired, hungry, and probably somewhat desperate for some human company after a year in isolation. Many of us can uh, picture much better what that's like after the year we've had. But he goes on and says this, you're looking forward to your first meal provided by human hands in over 12 months. And you discover that God's provision is a very confused and somewhat undernourished woman in a desperate situation. You know, that is surprising that God would choose to work like that. You know, God is providing in this place of uh, Elijah's enemies. It has overtones of Psalm 23, where we read in the end of that psalm that you prepare God a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You know, God, I have found over the years, often surprises me in the way and means and the people he used to provide for me and for God's people. I loved hearing Jenny and Roop and their account of someone they didn't know, a kind of friend of a friend of a friend who God used and spoke to to provide their needs. You know, what we receive physically and spiritually, like Amanda was saying, It is through our miracle working God and he can use even the most unexpected people and circumstances. You know, in many ways, 
Elijah and the widow were both beggars. They were both in desperate need. Elijah's here asking for help. And really the widow's saying, hey, hold on a minute, I need help. But God comes and supplies both of their needs as they come together in amazing ways. You know, God's provision for us as a church has been remarkable this year. It's been surprising time and again how he has worked. And it's been so wonderful for my children and the children of the church and really for all of us to see God provide uh, in uh, unexpected ways. You know, um, it reminds me of a story of George Muller. He was a great man of faith. He lived in Bristol and uh, uh, provided homes for orphans to, to help them. Um, and he wasn't afraid to draw the children in his orphanages into the reality of how he needed to trust God to provide for their needs. He, he drew them into the, the challenges they faced and then into the miracle of God's supply. I, I love this quote of his. It's very apt seeing as we're in this season on walking with God. He says this, be assured that if you walk with him, with God, and look to him and expect help from him, he will never fail you. Isn't that wonderful? In his uh, biography of George Miller by Roger Steer, um, called Delighted in God. This is a, a story that just has really captured my imagination over the, the years. Uh, I love this uh, true story uh, recounted in the biography. And it says this, early one morning, Abigail, one of the girls uh, in the orphanages, was playing in Muller's garden on Ashley Down when he took her by the hand and said, come and see what our father will do. He led her into a long dining room. The plates and cups or bowls were on the table and there was nothing on the table but empty dishes. There was no food in the larder and no money to supply the need. The children were standing waiting for breakfast. Children, you know we must be in time for school, said Muller. And then lifting his hand, he prayed. Dear Father, we thank thee for what thou art going to give us to eat. And according to the account, a knock was then heard at the door. The baker stood there. Mr. Muller, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have enough bread. And the Lord wanted me to send you some. So I got up at two o'clock in the morning and um, baked some fresh bread and I brought it. Muller thanked the baker and praised God for his care. Children, he said, we not only have bread, but the rare treat of fresh bread. And almost immediately there came a second knock at the door. This time, it was the milkman who announced that his milk cart had broken down outside the orphanage and that he would like to give the children his cans of fresh milk so that he could empty his wagon and repair it. Wow, what a faithful God. You know, God, I found so often actually uses our needs, not just our resources, but our needs to bring him glory and help others. So often God uses, in fact, uh, he uses our weaknesses far more than our strengths, our weaknesses as we trust him and, and prove him faithful, uh, shine brightly to others. You know, Elijah in this story, he humbly acknowledges his need and is vulnerable uh, with the woman. And then she, in response, is humbly acknowledging her vulnerability and need. And in that context, even of admitting huge despair that she feels, she recognizes something of God's timing in this. You know, many in our city, many in our nation, in this time of national crisis, like this woman, face great despair and fear for themselves and for their future and for the future of their children. And if we're honest, many of us in the church are feeling those same things too. But you know, as we humbly acknowledge our need, as we look up to God, you know, one of the things that the Bible says time and again is that God gives grace to the humble. It's not that we only receive as we have life all sorted and can present this wonderful kind of picture to him. No, God gives grace to the humble. And how wonderful is his gracious daily provision that flows into this situation for Elijah and the widow in our story. And as God's grace flows into it, let's read on in verses 13 to 16 to see how God works. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. 
Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. Elijah says to the woman, don't be afraid. Live generously and trust God for his provision. So secondly, I want us to see um, this morning, receiving in unexpected ways, but also giving in unexpected times. Giving in unexpected times. You know, the widow certainly didn't expect in a drought with hardly anything left in the larder to provide for her and her son. She certainly didn't expect to be giving in that time in her life. And, And maybe in these financially uncertain days, Uh, You know, you've been thinking, well, um, you know, I'll just wait and see how it all pans out. And maybe when this is all through, I'll then be able to give to this and that or the other. But actually, I've been amazed at how many people in the church have just given so generously, even in these unexpected times. Uh, I haven't known any of the specifics, but I have seen, as we've had like our World Missions Gift Day in May, how God has just so wonderfully poured out in all kinds of ways for us to exceed our expectations of, of what might be given then. And again in November, as we had a gift day for our city and for the work of our church to bless the city, it was amazing to see God uh, in an unexpected time just release such generosity. And even in, in what we're seeing with this uh, situation with the NHS, like Becky's been saying, we've been receiving in unexpected ways, but we will also be able to give at this unexpected time in, in phenomenal ways. So we praise and thank God for it. But as we continue on in what I'm sure will continue to be financially uncertain times, these feel like they're very apt words for us. Verse 13 and 14, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Elijah says to the woman. You know, fear often keeps us from living generously. But we need not fear because whatever challenges the future faces, God is the one who is faithful in his provision. I love these words of Corrie ten Boone, who lived during the Second World War in great difficulty and situations of great uncertainty. And yet she said this, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. You know, Elijah in this situation had to turn from any fear in his life to faith that God would provide in this different way. And as he moved away from the Kerith Ravine and the brook there, you know, and the woman had to turn from fear that she was gonna run out to faith in Elijah's word that God would provide for her a son and for Elijah, but God is utterly dependable and he does provide. He provides amazingly. In fact, it it seems that the woman has to kind of step out in a step of generosity that kind of releases um, further provision for her and her son. You know, a life of generosity flows out of a life of faith in God's provision, that God really is that Jehovah Jireh, which is one of his names in the Old Testament. It means the God who will provide. God is our provider. Whether we have a little or a lot, we can give generously to him. Uh, I remember one time a man called Brother Moses coming uh, to the church. He was a a leader in uh, uh, churches in India. And I remember him speaking about a woman in his church, uh, a woman who was uh, herself a widow. Uh, She had not just her son to look after, but because the son was actually uh, often drunk and very abusive, Um, she ended up having to look after his children as well. And so she was trying to care in her poverty. She didn't have any uh, kind of ability to read or write, um, just with very few means to care for her uh, grandchildren. And, uh, you know, one of the things that um, Brother Moses said he had to do one time was to speak at his church on giving. And he spoke about how God loves to uh, give to us and provide for us. And that as we give, we can give sacrificially, even uh, whatever we have, uh, even when it hurts. And uh, the woman came up to him afterwards, this, this poor widow, and said, you know, God had really spoken to her and uh, that uh, she'd uh, felt that uh, Jesus was calling her to give a hundred rupees, which uh, uh, was about two days wages, a huge amount for, for this, um, this widow. 
And the brother Moses, I remember so clearly, uh, he, he told us, he said to her, he said, uh, uh, no, no, don't do that. And he, he confessed to us as a congregation. He said, you know, that in his mind, he hadn't been speaking to this widow. He'd been speaking to others in the congregation. And as he was kind of saying this to her, he was just uh, convicted again by his own message that actually, actually, it, it is a call that God has for us to live generously, even when it hurts. In fact, to encourage us to live generously in sacrificial ways. I mean, that's what Jesus honored in the widow that he saw giving so amazingly at the end of Mark 12, when he said, this poor widow has put in to the treasury more than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she in her poverty put in everything she had to live on. You know, we prayed earlier. We prayed that God would give us this day our daily bread. And Jesus, when he teaches his disciples to pray, teaches them to pray that in the plural, not the singular. It's not give me this day my daily bread. It's give us today our daily bread because God gives to you and I more than just we need. He gives to us so that we can then share with others. He gives something to us for others. And so in this time, let's keep trusting God. Let's receive from him in unexpected ways, but let's give in this unexpected time generously because God is faithful. And what a wonderful picture verse 15 and 16 is of God's faithfulness. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken to Elijah. You see, our God is a God who provides in unexpected ways and who gives to us even at unexpected times. And there is probably no more unexpected way and unexpected time than 2000 years ago when on a cross outside of Jerusalem in Roman occupied Palestine, a man who was uh, stripped so that he had nothing, a uh, man in poverty and weakness, Jesus Christ hung on a cross. And there in that place of execution, God gave and his grace flowed to you and to me, to all of humanity for our biggest need, for a, a debt that I have and that you have before God, the, the, the debt that's caused by the times I've been greedy rather than generous, selfish rather than loving, that uh, in those times I need God's grace and, and God's grace flows to me and it flows to you and it flows in abundance daily in all sufficiency for what you need and what I need from the cross of Jesus Christ. It flows today and it will flow tomorrow and it will flow always. There will always through Christ be enough, enough for us physically and spiritually. And God will work an amazing transformation in those who look to Jesus and receive from him. And so I wanna end by just inviting you to a posture of receiving you might want to just put your hands out open in front of you I invite you to ask God for what you need to receive from him and 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 if um you you're in need just physically at the moment I encourage you please get in touch with the church I, I believe that God wants to provide for you and I believe that one of the ways he provides for people is through his church the, the body of Christ we his arms and legs and so please do get in touch if you are in need in some way and you're listening to this but also God wants to provide as we were hearing earlier just the strength you need the the grace the peace an awareness of his presence so put your hands out open and let's receive from him and thank him but also the same posture is one not just of receiving but of sharing Let's live open-handed lives in a closed-fisted world. Let's be those that give as we receive, who share what God has given us and, and share generously. And so I'm going to pray, and I encourage you, pray with me as we hold our hands out open to receive and to give. Let's bow our heads together. And you might want to echo these words with me.
Lord Jesus, give us today our daily bread. I humbly acknowledge my need and the needs of those around me. Thank you for what you have given us. Particularly, I thank you for the cross. We trust you, Jesus, for your provision in the weeks and months ahead. We trust you for your daily grace. Lord, help me share what you have given me with others who need it. Help me live generously, trusting in your provision. Amen.